Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm Pastor Charles Bradley from Midwest Baptist Church, and I am Sister Bessie Bradley, the wife of Pastor Charles R. Bradley, and we are here to greet you this morning. And wish you a very, very Merry Christmas and a happy, safe, prosperous New Year. God gave his all in giving Jesus. Jesus gave his all in giving his life. Now you give. Amen. Good evening, brothers and sisters in Christ. We thank God for you. And we thank God for allowing us in his house one more time. Amen. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Well. So let us pray and thank him. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, the God of all grace, Help us in our praise for you. Yes, Lord. Help us in our prayers and help us in our reading and studying the word and in our preaching. Thank you. And teach us to worship you in spirit and in truth. Yes, help us to call upon your name aright. And help us to be glad in you in everything we do and help us to worship yes, and praise you yes, Lord. more and more each and every day. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. In Jesus name. Amen. Something's 
Psalms 91, the first seven verses, and it goes as follows. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowl and from the northern pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wing shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flieth by day, nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall by thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. I read you the first seven verses of Psalms 91. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Almighty and eternal God, our Father who art in heaven, holy is your name, and Lord, we come before you today, joining our voices in the chorus of angels and the glorified saints, assembled around your throne, ascribing to you blessings and honor and glory and dominion and power. Yes, Lord. For there is none like you. None. Because you are worthy to be praised. Thank you, we come to you with thanksgiving on our lips. Yes, Lord. Because your goodness has opened your hands to supply us with the needs of today. Yes, Lord. Your love has protected us from harm and danger and injury and all hurt. You have opened your heart and drawn us closer to yourself with your forgiving mercies. Father, thank you today for every blessing. We got up this morning and we could walk. Open our eyes and we could see. Thank you, Lord. 
open our mouths and we could talk. You fed our empty mouths with food. We thank you for the air that we breathe and the refreshing water that we drink and even the beauty of your creation that we see every day. Well. Above all, thank you for Jesus who suffered and died on the cross for our sins. In fact, Jesus became sin, sin for us. Yes, Lord. Lord, we thank you for that. Thank you. He paid a debt that there was no way for us to pay. Well. Lord, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yes, Lord. And I say that beginning in my own life so that everybody I come around, I will touch them in such a way that they will want to come to Jesus. Lord, as we worship you today, help us to overcome any sluggishness to worship you. Remove all distracting thoughts. As we go through the week, we ask your blessings on us in our coming and going. Yes, Father, we ask that you look with favor on our prayer list today. For those who are sick, we ask that you grant healing according to your wisdom and mercy. And while they are waiting on you, bless them and help them with patience. Lord, we thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> now, as we consider those things that we have asked you for, mm -hmm. and knowing that you will do what is best for us, we say not my will, but your will be done. Yes, but we ask not on our merits, but because of all of those things that Jesus has done. Yes, Lord. <clears throat> Lord, we come to you with thanksgiving and love and asking you these things today. Thanking you for all, in advance for answering our prayer. Thank you, Lord. Because we know that you will. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Some because when we look at the fact that the United States is only 4%, 4% of the world's population. However, believe you me, of the cases of coronavirus, it's 25%. The number of cases in the world is 17,326,926 cases of the coronavirus. The number of deaths in the world because of the coronavirus is 3,312,279,000 deaths because of the coronavirus. In the state of Illinois, where we live, there are 120,279 deaths today at 3 o'clock, and it's still counting up. And today, there were 1,520 deaths already today. My Lord. Yesterday, that number reached close to 5,000 deaths in one day. The reason I say this psalm is special because when you look at it, think of what it says in verse 3. Surely he, meaning God, shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise of pestilence. A pestilence is a disease. It is a virus that's going across the country killing people. Not only does it mention it in verse 3, it mentions it again. It says in verse 6, For the pestilence that walketh in the darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. And you see, every time I read this psalm, when I look at verse 7, I thought it was talking about people. People that were my enemies that were coming against me. Hmm. And God was killing them with, with his angels. But maybe we didn't think on that enough. 
Because when we look at what's happening with the coronavirus, well, the scripture says a thousand shall fall by thy side and ten thousand by thy right hand. Mm. Maybe we should give that another thought. My Lord. Many of the expressions used here are things that we can look at today and know that we are living in the last time. My Lord. For these reasons, it is by no means improbable that you and I should think on the things that God has told us. For when we see this, we need to know that David has said the reward of the wicked would be contrary to his declaration. I have sinned, but these sheep, what have they done? And the absence of any allusion to the sacrifice upon Zion would not be in any way accounted for since David's repentance would have inevitably led him to dwell upon the atoning sacrifice well, and the sprinkling of the blood with hyssop. My Lord. In the whole psalm here, even the collections of psalms that we look at here, there is not a more cheering song. Its tone is elevated and it is sustained throughout the psalm with faith at its best. That's what you and I need. Well. Its tone is elevated like that and it speaks nobly. A German physician spoke of it as the best preservative in times of pestilence and in truth and it is a heavenly medicine well, against plague and pest. Huh. He or she who can live in the spirit of this psalm will be a fearless person. My Lord. When we look at these things, we need to know that the first thing that we'll look at, and I'll, I'll barely get back by verse 1 and 2. Verse 1 and 2 talks about the state of the godly. And so when we look at that, he that liveth in the secret place, or dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The blessings promised here, the blessings of abiding in the shadow of the Almighty, is not for every believer. Say that. It's only for those believers who dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Hmm. Not those who come in and skip out in a minute. All right now. We need to know that and understand that every child of God looks towards the inner sanctuary and the mercy seat, but yet all who do not dwell in the most holy place, they run to it at times, they enjoy an occasional approach, but they do not habitually reside in the secret presence of God. My Lord. They don't do that. They would become possessors of a rare special benefit which are missed by those who follow the Lord afar off. I heard somebody say one day that you say you following Jesus, but if he was to turn left or right, you would know which way he went. <laughs> You need my to Lord. understand what we ought to be doing, following close. My Lord. The scripture here tells us that we grieve the Holy Spirit when we don't follow the Lord the way we should. In the secret place, only those who come to know and love God in Jesus Christ and those who dwell there can say, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. How is that? Hmm. God has got a better place for me in heaven with him. Amen. Much better than what it is down amen, here. Amen, amen. Those who dwell in the secret place, to them the veil is torn in two. Hmm. The mercy seat is revealed. The covering cherubs are manifest. The magnificent glory of the most holy place and the most high God is apparent. These, like Simeon, have the Holy Ghost upon them, and like Anna, they do not depart from the temple. Know what? They are couriers of the great king, the valid men who keep watch around the bed of Solomon, 
the virgin souls who follow the Lamb wheresoever he goes. Hmm. Elect of the elect, they have attained unto the first three of those things, and they shall walk with the Lord in white. Why? Because they are worthy. Hmm. They are worthy. Are you following the Lord close enough? Amen. Where you can walk with him in white? All right now. They sit down with the Lord in the holy place, in the secret place, hmm. in God's august presence, where shines the mystic light of the Shekinah glory. They know what it is to be raised up together in the heavenly place to sit with Christ in the heavenlies. That's Ephesians 2, 6. And to them it is truly said that their conversation is in heaven. A special grace like theirs brings with them to those who are true and dedicated to the Lord a special immunity. We need a special immunity today. They are the court worshipers. They are those who don't worship in the holy place, in the secret place. They do not dwell in the secret place, so they know little about what belongs in the inner sanctuary. Or surely they would have pressed on until the place of nearest nearness and divine familiarity would be theirs. Those who are the Lord's constant guests shall find that he will never allow any of them to be injured within his gates. He has eaten the covenant of salt with them and pledged their protection. This phrase, the covenant of salt, is mentioned two times in Scripture. Numbers 18, 19, God's covenant with the Aaronic priesthood is said to be a covenant of salt. 2 Corinthians, or 2 Chronicles 13, 5, God's covenant with the Davidic kings of Israel is also described as a covenant of salt. According to the Oxford Anointed Bible, the phrase of salt means that the covenant is a perpetual covenant because it, the use of salt is a preservative. The commandment regarding the grain offering in the book of Leviticus Chapter 2, verse 13, states that every offering that people bring shall be seasoned with salt, and they shall not allow salt of the covenant of your God to be lacking from your offering. Know what that means? That means that, 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 that when you give an offering, don't ever say, I gave my money. The scripture tells us that it is God who gives you the power to obtain wealth. If you didn't have a mind, what would you do? If you didn't have skills, what would you do? How do you think you got your degree? On your own? No, you didn't. In the most holy place, the wings of the cherubim were the most conspicuous objects. And perhaps this is why the Holy Spirit gave the psalmist the expression they shall abide under the shadow of their wings. Those who commune with God are safe with him. No evil can reach them, for the outstretched wings of his power and love cover them from all harm. Their protection is constant. They're always affected. They abide in it. That's what I mean they abide under the shadow of the Almighty. It reminds me of the scripture that we should abide in Christ. And it's all sufficient for the shadow is the shadow of the Almighty whose omnipotence or all powerfulness will surely screen them from all attack. Isaiah said in 54, 17, no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. The almighty God himself is where his shadow is. 
And therefore, those who dwell in the secret place are shielded by God himself. What a shade that would be under the shadow of God's wing if he was standing out in the hot sun. What a refuge it would be in the hour of a deadly storm. Communion with God is all safety. The more closely we cling to our Almighty Father, the more confident we may be. No matter who you are, you can be rich or poor, learned or unlearned, young or old, for God is no respecter of person, but he is rich to all who call upon him. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High is not he or she who conjures up one or two slight fleeting acts of hope in him, but the man or woman who places all of their faith and all of their trust in the Lord. In this way, he or she can be certain of God's promise. God's promise of a home. As a matter of fact, somebody wrote a song called, You Promised Me a Home Over There. And one day, I'm going up yonder. He promised them a home, a dwelling place, a mansion in heaven. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, this describes an intimate, unrestrained communion with God. The Christian in every way, making known his heart to God himself. He tells God about his needs and his wishes. He tells God his thought and his feeling, his doubts and his anxieties, his sorrow and his joy. God, a loving father, a perfect friend, is always there to comfort. And this is not one side. This almighty God has admitted his chosen ones to his secret place. Know this. It's almost too wonderful to believe, isn't it? But know this, God himself permits it. God himself desires it. God teaches us to realize that it is communion to which he calls us with him. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. And what is this secret? It is that which is in God, which the world does not know, the world cannot see, nor can the world enjoy. It is God's mind revealed to those that love him. It's God's plan that's revealed to those that love him. It's God's ways that reveal to those who love him. Psalms 103.7 says, he has made known his ways to Moses and his thoughts open to them. Know this, Philippians 2.5 says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And the next thing it says, 1 Corinthians 2.16, For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But you have the mind of Christ. You, how do we have the mind of Christ? It's the word of God. It's the Bible. When you read the word of God, you study the word of God, you take the word of God in, you do the word of God. The, James 1.22, be ye doers of the word yes, Lord. and not hearers only. And believe you me, you'll be walking day and night with the mind of Christ. The secret place also means a place of refuge from the storms of the world. Under the secrets of his providence, the God who cares for all of his children, this then being the meaning of the secret place of the Most High and our dwelling in it by confidence in God, we learn in all of our troubles to cleave to God for help. Amen. Whenever we got a problem, right. we dwell that means we must make it our rest home. Mm -hmm. 
Mallow. It means we should say, here is where I am going to yes, stay. Yes, From Lord. where I learned that God's children should not come and go to the secret on, place as death in the end, but they should be the inhabitants on, of the secret place because they are God's children. Yes, Lord. That's what we should know. They are God's children. When we look at these things, we should know. It said, we shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Abiding is the last point I'm going to make. Mm, all right. John 15, 4 and 5. Jesus said, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can you, except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him shall bring forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. My Lord. Abiding means a constant, continuous dwelling of the Christian with the assistance and the protection of God. That means dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. That help and protection is of God. It's not like living in a lodge. Hmm. That's of the world. God's place is a strong tower, yes, a paternal home, wherein we spend all of our life with the best. Well, we spend all of our life with the wealthiest. We spend all of our life with the mightiest parents there in the secret place of the Most High. My Lord. We need to look at these things. We need to know these things. The shadow alludes to the symbols of the ark. Under the ancient ceremony, the high priest could only enter the most holy place one time a year, where he stood with the emblems of divine glory in the presence of the Lord. But under this new present dispensation, every true believer has access. We have boldness into the holiest of all, and he who dwells in the secret place of prayer and communion with the God of salvation shall find God's divine mercy and care spread all over him well, during his daily life my Lord. under the shadow of the Almighty. This expression implies nearness. Are you near to God? Mm. We must walk very close to our companion. If we are to have his shadow on us, can you imagine any expression more perfect in describing the constant presence of the Lord with his sons and daughters? My Lord. We abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We have to be near. But there is a condition and a promise here. Say that. The condition is that we dwell in the secret place of the Most High. And the promise is that we shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, where we are under God's protection from hurt, harm, danger, and yes, disease. My Lord. Depend on it. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for all that you have done, all you're doing, and all you're going to do, for we know that all things work together for the good of those of us who love you, who are yeah. called according to your purpose. And thank you that no evil thank advice you, thank you, Lord. shall come upon me will prosper. Nobody who talks about me is going to get away with it because I will be able to condemn them myself. Well. Because my righteousness is of you. Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Jesus name. Amen.
Jesus a question. What is the great and the first commandment? And Jesus summed up the entire Old Testament in two statements. You know what he said? You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Now, to get into all of that, let me say this to you. That we need to, if you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you need to admit your need because God is holy. All right now. And we are not. Say that. Our sin separates us from, from God. Yes. All have sinned and, and come short yes. of the glory of God. Sure enough. You need to believe on Jesus Christ. God loves you so much that he sent Jesus to die for your sins and mine. Oh, my Lord. Thank you, Lord. God demonstrated his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, hmm. Christ died for us. Thank you, Lord. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Call on him. Talk with God and accept his free gift of salvation today. The scripture says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord mm, shall, shall be saved. Be saved, my Lord. Let's be dismissed. Amen. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done, all you're doing, and all you're going to do. Yes, Lord. And Lord, we thank you and we say, by the grace of God. Yes, Lord. And our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May it rest, rule, and abide with us now and forever as we abide in the secret place of the Most High. Yes, Lord. It's in Jesus' name. In we the pray. name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.